I usually talk about the more, you know, like the more old and obscure movies. So I thought, why not just take a look at something, you know, a little more mainstream. And the Hostel movies, they're, they're recommended every now and then, so I thought, that's perfect. So, we have three movies. Hostel, Hostel Part 2, it's a great title, and Hostel Part 3. Well, it's not a bad title, but... You know. Anyway, I feel like these movies sort of have a bad reputation among the, the real horror fans. But, you know, I'm, I'm here to just give them a fair chance. I mean, they're, they're not bad movies from a film industry point of view. The original, the first Hostel, made 80 million dollars on a budget of a little under 5 million. That's hugely profitable. Part 2, not so much, but still brought back three times its budget. Part 3 was a, a straight-to-video release and I have no idea how that one did. So, when talking about Hostel, I always have to think of the term torture porn, because from what I understand it was first coined in a review on Hostel, you know, to, to describe this new trend in horror movies. But I, but I always think it's a, it's a rather stupid and, and sort of condescending term, you know. First of all, it, it's, it's nothing new. These torture porn movies were already like made back in, in its 60s by, by the likes of Herschel Gordon Lewis. It's, it's nothing new. But besides that, what is torture porn? You know, it sounds like porn that, that involves torture. The same way that lesbian porn is porn that involves lesbians. And midget porn is porn that involves... Oh, well, you get the porn the point. Oh. But I guess it's it's because critics, they think that, that the people who watch these movies, who enjoy these movies, that they, they get a kick out of seeing people getting tortured, like they get excited just like, like watching porn. And, and that sucks, you know, like it, it makes the, the people who, who do watch this movie and who do enjoy these movies, it, it makes them feel bad, like, like they're some kind of sickos. But then honestly, I, I don't really see any difference between watching these kind of movies and enjoying these kind of movies compared to, to watching drama or war movies and, and, and enjoying those kind of movies. And, and even worse, there's also the term Gorno. Oh, it's so bad. But you know, I, I don't know, just, just fuck the whole torture porn term. I feel like it's already losing its place within cinema jargon, so hey, that's a good thing. Let's just talk some movies. Hostel, written, directed, and co-produced by Eli Roth. And I'll come back to him later, because I feel like he doesn't have that great of a reputation either. So, the movie starts off with these three backpackers, two friends from the US and this one guy from Iceland, who are visiting Amsterdam. And it's always cool to see your own country in a movie, you know? Especially when you're from a smaller country. It's funny how they get everything wrong. What language is that? It sure isn't Dutch. And that's definitely not Dutch, it's German. Later, the, the main bad guy is introduced, who is credited as the Dutch businessman, but is played by a Czech actor. It doesn't sound too convincing trying to speak Dutch. Also, I love the fact that there's apparently so many people out there that seem to think that Amsterdam is like a country on its own. God, I hope bestiality is legal in Amsterdam because that goes a fucking hog. But enough about that. I mean, if I'm already complaining this much, I can't imagine how people from Slovakia must feel about this movie. Or Asians. Your friend? My friend. Uh, what is Although I'm, I'm not really complaining, of course. I mean, I find things like this actually rather unintentionally amusing. So, the three backpackers, they meet this guy who tells them to go to Slovakia, to this specific hostel in particular, because all the girls there are hot and DTF. And guess who liked that? So they go, meet some hot girls that are DTF. Uh, DTF it means it's, it's down to fuck. I'm, I'm just trying to sound cool here. So they're having the time of their life, until one guy goes missing, and then another one, and then finally the third one discovers what happened to them. They were kidnapped for rich businessmen who pay a lot of money so they can do with them whatever they want. And that is, of course, where all the gore and torture comes in place. And, and you know, when you think of it, it's, it's really not that bad of a story. It's actually pretty gruesome. These rich guys who have all the money in the world, they can buy whatever they want, but presumably they're, they're still not happy. But, but they, they feel so powerful that they feel like, well, they, don't, they actually can buy a human being to do what, whatever they want, you know, as sort of like a, a last resort of a feeling gratification. That's, that's pretty messed up. But the movie itself isn't particularly smart or anything. We get a typical young adolescent smoking weed, banging chicks. Maybe because that's relatable to the target audience. But they're so cliche. We have the playboy party dude, the responsible playing it safe guy, and the weird funny foreign guy. Although, in all honesty, there is some development that I ended up liking the main, main guy, Paxton. The build-up, it, it, it's not bad. I mean, it's nothing special, but, but it's like the first one-third, it, it's the setup, nothing happens, just fun, and a lot of boobs. 
Then, second act, oh shit, one guy is missing, what is going on? It gets a little crazy, but, but you don't know exactly what's going on, you know? Then, final act, boom, shit hits the fan, crazy stuff, and everything comes together. And, and that's okay, you know, it works, it gives you some time to get involved with the characters. And even though the, the, well, the performances, they're, they're not bad, they're, they're okay, but, you know, the characters aren't all that likable, but still, it, it somehow worked for me, you know? You know, I, I somewhat fell for, for the characters. Eli Rudd, he, he's a big Takeshi Miike fan, and he sort of modeled the movie after audition, you know, like, like structure-wise, with, with saving all the gruesome stuff till the end. So that's cool, and, and he actually even gave Takeshi Miike a small cameo role in this movie, which is, that's pretty cool. Of course, he also gave himself a small cameo role, but hey, that's, that's cool too, I guess. Anyway, let's talk torture porn. During the opening credits, you'll see that the guys from KNB FX are responsible for the special effects, and that's always a good thing because these guys are awesome. I recently saw this TV documentary called Nightmare Factory about KNB FX group, and it's pretty cool, pretty interesting. So they deliver the good stuff, no cheap effects. But Ironically, for today's standards, this one wasn't even that bad. During the first torture scene, a lot of it is suggestive and it happens off screen. But it worked pretty well, because even though, like I said earlier, the characters aren't all that relatable, to me, the situation kinda is. You know, in a, oh shit, how the fuck would you feel in a situation like that kinda way. So, it's, it's pretty effective. And then later, when, when some of the bad guys who you've come to hate during the third act, when they get what they deserve, you're like, yeah, boom, fuck you. At least, that's how I went. So really, for what it is, just a, a fun, gory, like, boom, in-your-face horror movie, it's, it's really not bad. I actually quite enjoyed it. I just don't think that anyone should pretend that it is a lot more than just that. Some Slovak officials were quite displeased with this movie in, in the way that it portrays Slovakia. And I can actually imagine that, you know, with, with kids killing for candy and then the overall corruption and everything. But on the other end, you know, from a movie point of view, with a predominantly a North American audience, it's, it's actually, uh, I understand, it's not a bad move. You know, there's just something creepy, like scary about unfamiliar, faraway foreign places. And how, how Eli Rudd justifies it, it it's, it's movie Slovakia. It's just to scare the movie audience while watching the movie, it's, it's not real Slovakia. The same way that all of Texas isn't like crazy killers from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And while I wouldn't go as far as Eli Rudd in saying that no American knows where Slovakia is on a, on a European map without looking at up. I am actually quite curious. So, okay, this is a map of Europe and Slovakia is, is where? Do, do you guys know it? Well, it's here. And, and while we're at it, do you guys, well, outside of Europe, know where Amsterdam, oh, I mean, the Netherlands is located? Well, 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 it, it's here. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, Hostel Part 2. So the movie picks up immediately after the first one with a surviving guy in a hospital. It's kind of ridiculous, but oh, spoiler alert, it's just a dream. But then the actual opening of the movie is, spoiler alert, also pretty stupid. Then it really starts and it's exactly the same movie, but now with female characters who are exactly the same. The party girl, the responsible one and the weirdo. They are in Rome, Italy and now leaving to Prague, but this one girl convinces them to go to Slovakia. Uh oh. And maybe it's just because this is the sequel, but, but it already feels a little like worn out, like a little forced. You know, the moment that that one girl starts talking to the main girls, y you know that she is bad news and that she's part of the, the secret organization. I feel like the story in, in the first movie that it just unfolded like way more naturally. But what I do like about this one is that they switch up the focus a little bit. We also experience it from the point of view of, of the bad guys. You know, the guys that buy the girls. In this one, well, kind of ridiculous montage, you see all these rich guys bidding on the girls all while having family breakfast and whatnot. Like, oh wait honey, I quickly have to do this thing here online. You just uh, mind your own fucking business. <laughs> but yeah, that the point of view, it was fresh. You get more insight into the whole organization, although I think I liked it better in the first one, where you just saw it as, as a shady organization. You know, that, that, that's all you needed to know, you could imagine the mechanics yourself. And here we see it as a super rich, almost glamorized organization. Hmm, I didn't really like that too much. So, the effects again by the guys from KNB, and it looks great. The first torture scene is it's pretty intense, it's, it's almost cult-like and <laughs> actually almost a little funny. Especially with the over-the-top sound effects. Never knew that metal on skin would, would sound that intense. 
Besides that, it's not even that gory. And I know, I'll get to the ending in a bit. So, uh, the two bad guys that we follow, I mean, the, the performances are pretty good, but I don't really get the characters. This one guy, he, he's kind of a wimp. It seems a little unbelievable that he was down with the whole idea in the first place. Definitely compared to his psychopath of a friend. But, and I'm going to talk about the ending now, so skip to here this time, Mark, if you want, if you want to skip the spoilers. So, the, the guys completely change personality all of a sudden. The wimpy dude goes all psycho, and the psycho dude, he chickens out. And I, I really didn't care for the ending too much. The, the girl, she gets the upper hand, and then they use a deus ex machina, when she simply just buys her way out because she inherited a shitload of money. So, it's a little lazy. Sure, it's, it's pretty gruesome when she cuts off his penis, and well, I don't know if YouTube likes that stuff, but trust me, it's pretty, uh, ouch. Then the, the, the ending ending, it's just campy with, you know, like a one-liner before killing the girl who lured them to Slovakia. Nostrovia. Which Eli Roth apparently doesn't even like. And then Freddy Krueger, it's like, don't lose your head, or have a nice day. And everyone's like, ha, oh, look, the killer made a joke while he's killing, isn't this great? And I'm like, oh, fuck, you know. So yeah, not a big fan of the ending. I love the cameo he put in this one, though. You know who that is? It's Ruggiero Deodato, uh, the man who directed Cannibal Holocaust, and he's playing, of course, a cannibal. So while I like the, the fresh point of view, you know, like, like following the bad guys, I just don't think it was as good as the first one. And I understand that, that, that he, that Eli Rudd wanted to explore more of the, the, the hostile universe that he has created with the first one. I just think it, it would have been better if he just did it already in the first movie, you know, like include some of the, 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 the point of view from the bad guys. Put that, if, oh, if that was all in the first movie, that, that would have been pretty cool, pretty interesting. But hey, at least it's a, it's a legit sequel. They, they work pretty well together. Unlike... Hostel Part 3. And, no oh man, this one was so unnecessary. The first two, they had the same crew, you, you know, same producers, director of photography, composer, art director, effects guy, and of course, writer and director. And almost none of them were involved with Part 3. Eli Rudd, he had nothing to do with it. And it just doesn't feel like a Hostel movie. Let's see. So, like a horror version of The Hangover, it's set in Las Vegas. These four friends, they go on a bachelor party, but soon end up in the hands of the secret organization. They did change the, the concept of the organization a little bit, which is fresh. Now it's a, a Vegas-style gambling game where the rich people predict, you know, for example, how the victims were gonna die. Which is new, but also a bit silly. All, all these bad guys, it, it feels more like a, a game show. It's, it's, it's a little ridiculous. It doesn't feel like real people like it does in the first two movies. Also, the killings aren't that great. There, there's some pretty bad CGI. And, and well, the, the most gruesome scene is it's actually just laughable, where this guy perfectly removes the victim's face with, with just a few cuts. It's, uh, the movie, it starts out pretty okay. They play a lot with your expectation because they know you've seen the first two. They know that you expect this and that to happen, but then they twist it like, ooh, pretty clever. But at one point, it, this just becomes tiresome and towards the end, it, it just becomes a mess with a ridiculous plot twist where, okay, skip to here if you, you want to, you know, where it turns out that one of the friends is actually a member of the organization. As a plot device, it's it's somewhat cool, but, but when you think of it, it's just ridiculous. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's... Uh, and, and then another twist, and another twist, and another twist. It's just a mess. It's really just a dumb B-movie. It's, it's pr pretty stupid. It's, it's really not that good. The, the director, he is pretty cool, though. Scott Spiegel, he, he co-wrote Evil Dead 2 with Sam Raimi, and he directed his underrated late 80s slasher flick called Intruder. But unfortunately, this was not good. I wonder what, uh, what Eli Roth thinks of this one. Ah, Eli Roth. I feel like a lot of people don't like this guy, but I love him. I don't know, maybe it is because he did the, the hostile movies that got him a, a bad reputation among the, the hardcore horror fans. But I don't know, I, I've seen him in a lot of interviews and stuff, because, well, let's be honest, the, the guy loves the attention. He loves the talk, you know, about, about cinema in general, but, but also his own movies specifically. I mean, the guy recorded four audio commentaries for the, for the hostile DVD release. But whenever I see him talk, I, I just can't help but to think that... That's a cool guy, you know? He, he knows what he's talking about, he, he's funny, he's just... I don't know, he just gives off this vibe to me, like, a cool vibe. 
And it's also not like that, that just because he's friends with uh, Quentin Tarantino that, that he can get shit done. I mean, he had to work for it. It took him forever to get Cabin Fever made. And it was Quentin Tarantino that got in touch with him because he liked Cabin Fever so much. And then he helped him with, with Hostel because Quentin Tarantino still had a lot of potential in, in the story, in the screenplay that, that Eli Rod wrote. And even now, Eli Rod, he still has problems finding distribution for his latest movie, The Green Inferno. Ah, you know, uh, I could talk about this and, and relate this up like forever, but you know, this, this video is, is getting pretty long already, so let's just call it a, a, a video. So, quick personal wrap up. Hostel, pretty cool. Part 2, it's, it's not a bad sequel, just I don't think it was super necessary. And part 3, pretty bad forgettable, completely unnecessary. It's funny though, because before I made this video, I rewatched the Hostel movies, also Cabin Fever. And, and for Cabin Fever and Hostel, it was the first time that I saw them since, I don't know, like maybe just after they came out. And I remember them to be way more gruesome and uncomfortable than, than what I thought now. Now I just thought they were, oh, that's, they're actually pretty cool. And it either means that I got really used to these kind of movies, or just that, 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 that the horror genre sort of adapted after this, these kind of movies. And that, that, that the viewers in general are more used to, to, to gruesome stuff now, and that this is like sort of tame by today's standards. In any case, I thought it was a, a pretty interesting little development. So, if you like to, you know, perhaps see me talk about other, like, more mainstream, like, movies or, or series or franchises, let me know in the comments below, like, what you would like me to, to, to talk about. Have a nice day.